This is Meet the Candidates, and we are here with Representative Dave Severn from the 116th House District. I'm Benji Jeffords. Another candidate in this race, Republican Gary Carter, was recently removed from the ballot by the State Board of Elections. He is currently appealing the decision, and we will bring you his forum later in this series. Should his appeal succeed, WSIU Public Broadcasting and the League of Women's Voters are pleased to host today's forum. Thank you so much for joining us today, Representative Severn. Let's get started. Okay, what is your number one priority if elected? I know it can be hard to narrow it down, but please let's try to stick to one. Sure, actually there's probably two points to that. I appreciate the question. One would be to um, hold down the spending in the state of Illinois. And the second part would be that would be tax relief. And then they hold down the, the spending in the state of Illinois. I found out six years ago when I was elected that uh, uh, serving in the house that uh, it didn't take long to figure out that we didn't have an income problem in the state of Illinois. What we have is a spending problem. And we found from the top of the state to the bottom of the state and the width that uh, uh, throughout the, uh, the state of Illinois, we've, uh, we, we spend too much on programs and things for uh, people rather than pay off our bills and make things uh, um, successful for the businesses in the state of Illinois. We've got to find a way to keep people here and for businesses to be successful and not to overtax them. And we've got to find a way to make, uh, again, for households to be able to live here, raise a family and retire. And by doing that, we've got to make taxes that are um, uh, consistent with the incomes that people have and be realistic with, with those things. Yeah, great. And if reelected, what would make you continue to be an effective lawmaker? Sure. So uh, actually, um, this would be my fourth term. And in the, in the previous three terms, I have a proven record of... Uh, being 100% pro-life, 100% pro-Second Amendment. And the, the other thing also is that uh, some of the committees that I've served on, uh, one of them that I'm most proud of this last uh, uh, session, being the 102nd uh, session, would be the uh, spokesperson on the Republican side in the House for the Jude Prim Committee. And those that is the committee that uh, all these terrible bills at the other side of the aisle have, have tried to ram down the throats of, of uh, the Illinoisans and try to make things... Uh, less safe uh, by um, making it easier for people to be criminals and rather than uh, prosecuting them. So I think those things, again, uh, being uh, very active in the education committees, health care, the things that I've brought to the table uh, have made me uh, enabled me to be successful and continue to represent the people that I serve. All right, moving on. The pandemic really exposed disparities in education funding. What would you do to make sure schools in your district are able to meet the needs of the families and the students? Sure, uh, another good question. And education has been uh, very important in my life. Served on the school board for 29 years. My wife's just retired as a third grade school teacher for over 30 years in the Benton School District. And so education is top priority. And, and what's really important to, for people to know that uh, I was supportive and will continue to be supportive of the evidence-based funding model. And, which brings more funds to uh, the schools in our district. And it's important that the uh, kids be given the opportunity to succeed, that we fund education properly to uh, fund the teachers and, and give them the tools to be successful. So not only um, funding, but the other thing that's really important that uh, uh, I did when I was elected uh, six years ago was I put together an education committee in my district with administrators, teachers, and I will do that in the new district also, and also include families in that to give people an opportunity to share their voice and concerns and make sure that we're addressing them. So uh, education is a top priority for me, and I'll continue to do work with that way. And speaking of funding, the state budget is a major priority in Springfield. Name three things that you would prioritize. Sure. Uh, education is, is absolutely number one, would be um, to take care of, of, uh, of the students, again, like I just stated, and and the other thing too is we got to make sure that we we fund um, uh, our police and make sure that they have an opportunity to be successful. And the the funding of the police that has happened in the last uh, session has been horrific. So I want to make sure that that is a priority that we take care of education, that we take care of uh, the police and and uh, uh, safety. And the other thing too is that we make sure that we're uh, consistent across the board for uh, families as far as taxation that uh, we can reduce those things and be realistic with uh, what goes on in the state of Illinois and give people an opportunity to stay here, give them a reason to stay here, not giving them reasons to leave. So education, 
uh, funding of uh, police and keeping the uh, people safe in the state and also giving people a reason to stay here. And now that we've talked about the budget priorities, what are three things that you would like to cut? Yeah, so, you know, uh, again, what I stated earlier is when I was first elected, one of the things I found, it wasn't an income problem, it's a spending problem. And so, uh, you know, this last session, we find a over 3,000 page budget that's thrown at us just at the last minute. And so this uh, other side of the aisle, and they are known for one thing in the state of Illinois is corruption. And, and so uh, that being a, a part of it also, as far as here we are throwing 3,000 pages as a, at the last minute, what is in that budget, what isn't in it, the uh, spending that doesn't need to be in there, those kinds of things. So that would be something that uh, we definitely need to work on as far as that. And, and also that we need to cut out the, the uh, besides corruption, cut out the, the overspending uh, in the state of Illinois. The, um, it, it's just gotten completely out of hand where we have programs that we provide for people that are absolutely uh, ridiculous. And, and the other thing would be, we've got to, uh, we've got to find a way to make uh, our taxes where the people can live within their means. And we've got to do that as a state legislators. And so uh, again, taxes have got to be something that we've got to, uh, we've got to work on and, and cut out and, uh, so those would be the three things that I would say would be the most important. And moving on, although the economy is recovering from the early stages of the pandemic, inflation is also on the rise. What would you do to help Illinoisans who are finding their paychecks don't stretch as far as they did even a couple of months ago? Well, you know, when uh, our previous president, uh, we were doing great as far as in, in the United States, as far as um, being uh, able to be self-sufficient and with the new uh, uh, administration that's going on not only nationally but also statewide the increase in, in costs uh, are really messing up uh, families and so what we've got to do is find a way to be um, efficient we've got to find a way for our state to be able to uh, uh, take care of people and so this is a uh, it's a major problem and and so there isn't any reason why we can't uh, take care of our families and our people in our state by uh, being efficient and then instead of being out of whack with the way we are now. And many people are pushing for more renewable energy, especially with the rising price of oil. At the same time, parts of Illinois have fossil fuels that supply supplies that could prove provide energy for many years to come. What would you do to ensure Illinois has a steady supply of energy and keep it affordable for Illinoisans? Well, I'm also proud that I was able to serve on the Energy and Environment Committee. And in that committee, or some bills that came through that we tried to fight very hard on the Republican side of the aisle. But unfortunately, the bills passed that uh, were going to cause uh, coal fired uh, power plants to close in the near future. And coal has never been cleaner than it is today. But we've got to find a way to uh, get people on both sides of the aisle to realize this. And, and if, in fact, the, these coal fired plants are closed, we're going to have to purchase power to keep uh, our uh, electricity on from the grid on the grid from surrounding states that will cost us more. And so uh, it's important that we not only uh, are supportive of coal, but also uh, oil. Of, uh, so we have, the, we have the, the tools in Southern Illinois and the state of Illinois to be successful with uh, the power that we need, uh, wind, hydro, um, solar. So if we will work out, put all those pieces together, we can be successful, not just pick on solar and, and say, hey, this is the answer, or, or uh, hydro is the answer, or, or one, of the, one or the other. We have to put a, a whole piece together of all the different pieces, and, and rather than just look at one piece. So, thank you. You're welcome. And uh, switching gears to healthcare, COVID-19 really changed the way people looked at healthcare and public health. What would you do to make sure Illinois is prepared for, to handle future public health emergencies? Well, one of the things, one of the biggest mistakes that we made in the state of Illinois was the, the super majority other side of the aisle Democrats, they allowed the governor to make all the decisions where it should have been, we should have been, if we had to go by Zoom or we were in person, we should have been meeting the House and the Senate to, to help make the decisions rather than putting all the pressure and putting all the power into one person, our governor, and giving him the opportunity to make all the decisions. And then we see what happened as far as the debacle of of businesses and and that had that had to close or move out of state and people that lost their jobs and then we had the problem with uh, the unemployment and all the different uh, the mess that was that happened there then we also had the uh, 
the veterans home uh, that had the COVID go through it. And the director of the, uh, uh, of the veterans facilities, that director was, it was a political appointment rather than being one that was someone that really knew what was going on. And so that became a real problem. So what we've got to do in the future from this day forward is two things. One is we've got to make sure that we stay uh, the governor, the house and the Senate, those three work together rather than just giving one of them power. And the other is we've got to make sure the different departments that we have in the state of Illinois are prepared. We can't be a knee jerk, a reaction when something happens, we've got to be prepared. And I found out also, if I can go into this just a little further, that when these different, when the pandemic came down and the different, the different um, things that we needed to help uh, with nursing homes and schools and, and all the different places, we found out that a lot of these things were in warehouses had not been rotated. So things weren't uh, up to date, they were old. And they, uh, so that's what part of the problem that happened too, is that that takes someone that knows how to manage and knows how to be a business person that you rotate your products. That just, just common sense didn't happen. So we, uh, that was a problem that a lot of people didn't even realize. So we've got to make sure that we work together, not just let one person make all the decisions and hold people accountable and be ready uh, when something happens, not just be a knee jerk reaction. Excellent. And another problem facing the state is gun violence continues to be a problem in communities. What would you do to address the violence and how do you balance that with Second Amendment rights? Yeah, so I've been a, a proponent, have been and will continue to always be a proponent of the Second Amendment. And, and so what we need to do, uh, I found that again, being on that Jude Crim committee is that um, we've, we're starting the new bill that was passed, HB 3653 in this Safety Act is making the state of Illinois soft on crime, and we need to be exactly the opposite. We need to be tough on crime and hold accountable those people that have committed the, uh, the terrible crimes rather than just being a slap on the wrist. And so uh, it's important also, you know, I get phone calls every day in my office for uh, FOID cards and concealed carry and the problems and challenges. And it's almost like the state of Illinois is making the people that are uh, law-abiding citizens, making them feel like they're the criminals. And so We've got to make sure that we uh, make sure the people that are being law abiding, they uh, have the opportunities to uh, uh, be proponents of the Second Amendment as they are, own guns, those kinds of things. But go after the people in the, uh, uh, the drugs and, and the corruption people that have got guns illegally. We've got to prosecute those people, make be tough on crime rather than being soft on it. And basically giving uh, people an opportunity to, to uh, feel safe at home. Right now, people after that, Safety Act, they're, uh, they feel less safe than they have in a long time. And we've got to make sure that people feel safe in this state, not feel uh, unsafe. And speaking of safety, criminal justice reform is a hot topic in Springfield. Do you support changes to the system, including alternative sentencing options like drug courts? What, would, what changes would you make to ensure safety while also making sure rehabilitation remains an option? So the drug courts are important. And I, again, being on that Jude Crim Committee, has enabled me to learn a lot about, uh, and I'm the spokesperson on that committee and working with Representative Windhorse, we actually uh, introduced legislation to repeal that safety act, which was making, uh, again, uh, criminals to feel like they can get away with whatever they want to, maybe you get a slap on the wrist. So again, the, the drug courts are important. And you know, something, another committee that I serve on is the uh, health and addiction committee. I'm the spokesperson in the house for that also on the Republican side. And, I found out just the, um, the epidemic we're having with um, concerns of people on drugs and those kinds of things. So we've got to make sure that we provide the services that we need to do, but also hold accountable those that are um, breaking the laws and prosecute those people in a, in a proper fashion. So we've got to make sure that we um, are fair, but we've also got to make sure that we address the problems, prosecute the people that need to be prosecuted, give people a second chance that need to be given that. And that's uh, so important. And we're finding that out on a daily basis. If there was ever a pandemic after the pandemic, to me, it is now the concerns of safety and, uh, and the drug addiction and those concerns. Let's switch gears to, to a new topic. Recent events have shown how much Americans can be impacted by global politics, as evidenced by supply chain shortages and rising prices due to the pandemic and fighting in the Ukraine. What would you do to help minimize the disruption of events like these on the people of Illinois? 
Well, something else, you know, again, I, I talked a little bit about as far as the, uh, the current administration in the national uh, picture and also the state. What we've got to do is uh, make ourselves where we can take care of uh, the state of Illinois and the United States without having to depend upon other countries. And so we've got to make sure that we, uh, first off, <laughs> agriculture is the number one business in the state of Illinois. And we've got to make sure that, that we promote that and take care of that. We should not be in a situation where we're having to depend upon uh, countries halfway around the world for food or fertilizer. We need to be where we're self-sufficient. We have the ability to do that in the state. What we've got to do is as legislators is to hold um, the state of Illinois accountable and give people in the state of Illinois an opportunity to be successful and to be able to be uh, take care of what things need to be done here rather than to be uh, looking to meet our needs from other parts of the world. It does not make sense. We have the ability to do that here. We have the technology. We have phenomenal uh, educators in our universities, colleges, schools, and uh, trained people, professionals to do those things. And so we've got to make sure that we can do that. Let's focus a little bit on the 116. What would you do to make sure the concerns of your constituents are heard in Springfield, considering the population density skews toward the northern part of the state? Yeah, I appreciate that question. And, you know, so something that I did again when I was uh, elected six years ago in my district is I put some different committees together. And one of the strengths that our office has, has is, and I know that not just because I'm the legislator and want to brag about what we do, but what we hear on a regular basis is that people know that we're accessible and that we're available to hear and work on uh, problems as people have them. But again, when I was talking about when I was first elected, we put several different committees together, and I will do that in the 116th to give people an opportunity to voice their concerns, and we'll work very hard at making sure that people know we're accessible, and we'll address concerns as they come across uh, the phone lines or emails or however they would reach out to us. And so that's something that we're already doing as far as going out in the community, meeting people, letting them know uh, who I am, what I'm about. And then I think the most important thing is to let people know that I'm accessible, uh, I'm an ear and I don't, you know, a lot of times politicians, what they do is they listen, they put together a committee and then they don't do anything. What we've done is we've listened, put committees together, but then we've acted and we're continuing to act on a daily basis. And in fact, they've already been in conversation with my uh, office this morning and different things that we're addressing. And so it's important for people in the 116th to know that we will address concerns as they come across um, our phone lines or we meet with them. And the other thing, as far as meeting with people, uh, that's something that I work really hard at is meeting with people on a regular basis, face to face, not just calling in them or not just getting an email, but people want to know that you care. They want to see you. And that's exactly what I'm doing. And I take great pride in that. And another thing that people are concerned about is what would you help? To, what would you do to help ensure fair elections and access to voting for all the people in Illinois? Another great question, and you know, something that, that has come up uh, on the other side of the aisle that we voted on uh, again in the last uh, um, session was that uh, it's important that people are given an opportunity to vote. It's important that they're, they're given an opportunity to be a part of the process, but also that they do things correctly. And so we want to promote as many people as possible to be a part of uh, uh, the election process and be a part of um, those kinds of things, but also to be aware of that there are people out there that want to uh, skew the system. They want to um, do things incorrectly. They want to do things that that they've uh, uh, enabled to enable them to to pull off some things that are unethical. So it's important that we hold people to the uh, to the fire, so to speak, and that uh, you know we've had ethics reform. We've tried to have ethics reform committees in the state, and uh, actually the uh, the speaker of the house was the chairman of that committee. And they canceled committee meetings. So uh, what we're doing on our side of the aisle, the Republican side, is the holding the, uh, the people accountable that during the elections that uh, it isn't something that we just um, uh, look to the side and, and kind of just hold our don't hold people accountable. So I think that's the most important thing is that we do that. And the pandemic taught us that internet access is becoming increasingly necessary for people to go to work and to go to school. What would you do to make sure rural areas can access the high-speed internet they need? That's something actually that, uh, uh, that is going on as we speak. And there are more opportunities now than there have been in the past. There's been some grants that have come down 
from the uh, from Springfield that are enabling actually as we speak there is uh, fiber optic being put in the rural areas now because it is a problem it is a challenge uh, a lot of times if people can they, they in their homes they can't get on so they have to go to their schools or go to their libraries which are some answers now but uh, working to make sure that we have uh, opportunities and there are grants available for local uh, entities to be able to have access in, to the internet uh, again in the communities. In the new district that I have, that is one of the big challenges. And again, I'm proud to say that uh, we are addressing that and we'll continue to address that uh, forward until we are able to meet those needs. That's a big challenge. And so, uh, and again, we won't just uh, give an idle eye to that. We'll continue to work on that. Another topic that statewide is COVID-19 depleted the state's unemployment fund. What would you do to address this? So here, so with the unemployment fund, we had the funds, the federal funds were given to us, the state of Illinois to pay off that unemployment insurance. And to, uh, but instead of taking and, and spending that money wisely and paying the bills, what we did is we saved about 3 billion, we being the state of Illinois. I wanna make sure that someone doesn't think we as the Republicans, but we as the state of Illinois, the other side of the aisle, the supermajority Democrat party chose to save $3 billion out of those ARPA funds instead of paying off the unemployment insurance um, debt that we have with the federal government, chose to take $3 billion of that and give that to their Democrats for them to spend on uh, uh, pork projects. So that was a, two things that's happened with that. One is a small businesses that will increase their uh, fees as far as their unemployment insurance. And the other thing, it'll decrease the opportunity if someone does go on unemployment, the, uh, the benefits that they'll receive. So we brought that attention to the other side of the aisle in Springfield, it fell on deaf ears. And so we've got to continue to work and let people know in the community that for us to be successful, for businesses to be successful, we've got to pay those things down. And Illinois has some of the highest property taxes in the country. What would you do to provide relief to homeowners? Well, another great question. And what we've got to do is we've got to stop uh, as money comes in the coffers, rather than uh, start new programs, we need to pay our, down our debt, pay off our bills. And what that, then that, what that does, that enables us as the state of Illinois legislators to decrease the taxes in the state of Illinois, rather than new money comes in, we start new programs. That's absolutely the wrong way to, to run the state as a business. And so if we will uh, pay off our debts, that is an opportunity for us to be able to decrease the cost of taxes to our taxpayers here in Illinois. We're almost out of time, Representative Severn, so this is gonna be our last question. Social services are another area that has seen funding depleted during the pandemic. What would you do to make sure Illinoisans can get the help when they need it? Great question, and again, having been in the nursing home business uh, uh, half of my life with our, our family, and also serving on the uh, health and addiction committee, the, uh, the challenge that we've got, what we've got to do is be able to find ways and to make sure that we fund those, um, those needs of people with social service needs. And so the opportunities that we have, there's some different uh, prisons that are actually closing. And what we can do with those is open those up for healthcare needs. And so we've got to make sure that we bring to the table, uh, not only the challenges, all the other things going on, but okay, we need funds for the healthcare and social services. We've got to address those things. So I'll continue to do that, serving as the spokesperson on the Health and Addiction Committee. Oh, actually, we're working as we speak to address those concerns. All right, well, thank you for joining us today, Representative Severn. I'm Benji Jeffords, and this is Meet the Candidates. Tune in next Thursday at 7 for the next episode.